my name is Trevor Paglin, and I'm, a, I'm an artist. And I'm here at the invitation of the, at the MIT's List Center and the Visiting Artist Program. My particular interest here at MIT is developing very, very archival materials, trying to think about how can we encode information into substances or materials that can last for very, very long periods of time. How do we as humans who experience the world in minutes, hours, days, years, or a lifetime interface with a planet that exists on millions of years, billions of years? These intersections between deep time and human time are, are, are very compelling to me and, and, and very interesting to think about. I think they're also quite relevant at this particular historical moment when, as a society, we're confronting things like global warming or how to store nuclear waste. And so I'm here at MIT working with uh, materials engineers and scientists, uh, with Brian Wardle and with uh, Carl Berg Green, who does uh, quantum and nanofabrication work and together we're trying to solve this problem of how what materials can we use that can that last on these you know really alien time scales and furthermore how can we encode information into these materials how can we create almost like uh, these postcards for the future or messages in the bottle that instead of moving out into the oceans move out into time and this is uh, the kind of project that is really only possible at a, at a research institution like MIT. What artists do and what scientists do seem to be very different. You know, we, in, in, when we imagine an artist, we perhaps imagine someone like Picasso or Jackson Pollock throwing paint around the studio and doing things that seem utterly incomprehensible to our everyday lives and being very strange people. And we imagine scientists being very rational people and you know, being very good at mathematics, which seems to be the opposite of what art is. Ultimately, art is trying to see things that other people don't see. And if you think about it that way, that's not a whole lot different, perhaps, than what good scientists do. What good scientists do, again, are trying to understand how, how does the world work? What, what, how is it possible to know about things? Can we develop? methods that we can use to see things that other people haven't seen before. Thinking about the future is a very difficult thing to do. We have a hard time knowing what we'll be doing in 10 years. We have a really hard time perhaps knowing what the world is going to look like or what our lives are going to be like in 20 or 30 years. However, as a society, uh, we've put, you know, earth processes in motion that, uh, that, are, that unfold over tens of years or hundreds of years. And I think this is something perhaps that art can contribute to this, to this overall question of, of, of the future and, and the uh, changing environments, is it can perhaps help us to try to imagine how to, how to, how to think in that kind of time or, or think about who we are in relation to these, uh, to Earth processes that fold out on timescales that are very different than what we experience every day. Human perception has changed enormously um, when you think about it. We've had like everything like in the 19th century, you have photography and uh, you know, invention of telephones and telegrams and, and uh, the railroads, which radically changing our notion of what things look like, our relation to time our relation to motion, our relation to space. Right now, we can use things like the Hubble telescope to see to the furthest reaches of the universe. And at the same time, use electron microscopes or even uh, the weirder kinds of equipment that I quite honestly don't understand to almost to like literally see atoms. I think a lot of artists understand that there's, there's something very dramatic going on in terms of the way that we understand what the world is and how we see the world. When I went to Carl Bergen's lab the other day, he was talking to me about the fact that there was really a huge amount of graffiti at the at the nano scale that uh, that you you know you really had to have the right machine to be able to see what it was. So that was a it was a it was a fun thing to learn about. What I wanted to do was to use some of these machines that are used for making very very small 
uh, electrical or, or com computer structures and repurpose them for making artwork. And Carl was, was pointing out that, you know, on the slide, people had already been starting to do that for fun, but, it, you know, perhaps we could really develop something more robust and a little bit more uh, you know, serious, perhaps, out of that. Mm -hmm. MIT's Visiting Artist Residency Program seems very unique to me in the sense that it puts um, artists in collaboration with and in contact with some of the leading uh, science and, and technology thinkers and researchers in the world. And does it actually in a very productive way where I think that there's a lot of opportunities for collaboration, for mutual inspiration, and for mutual uh, respect and sharing that doesn't happen a lot in society or in you know across different fields in the way that um, that it does here so I think that's a very special thing <laughs>